Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Pimble and I've decided to try to educate you all on FNAF Science. It will be split up into a few sections with different guests. Enjoy! Starting off with possession, when a person dies they have two options. They can move on to the afterlife, which most people do, or they can stick around and possess an object. It has been set up possession works by William Afton. The spirit follows the flesh it would seem, and also the pain. You can either inhabit an object near you, or you can attach yourself to someone through emotion. Andrew attaches himself to William through his pain in the Fazbear Fright series. Jake possesses his doll through love. One more thing with spirits. Spirits can interact with the world around them. They can give hallucinations to mess with people that are in the living world, and they can communicate through drawings and words. Susie draws on a piece of paper in Coming Home. Cassidy and the bite victim draw on the logbook. Now here's everyone's favorite subject, Remnant. Take it from here, Ghost. What is Remnant? Let's look at how it's described by the people who know it best. In non-scientific terms, it's like the metal is haunted. It's more complicated than that, of course, but it's similar to the way that water conducts electricity. Remnant is the mixing of the tangible with the intangible, of memory with the present. People and the things that are lost, it makes them almost real again. Remnant is the mixing of the intangible with the tangible, something physical with something non-physical. The physical in this case has been shown to be many things throughout the franchise, like the Ella doll from the trilogy and mirrors in the epilogue, and the one that's most important to FNAF's story, metal itself. And the non-physical is memories linked with emotions, it's energy. Metal acts as a conductor to this energy, allowing it to spread through objects causing movement in robots or seen in the books control of electricity. Remnant itself is a small remaining quantity of something. This in the case of Remnant is yourself. This is your memories, which is a part of your soul, it's a piece of you that leaves us and stays behind is a sign of your presence. Maybe we're all sharing our fears, regrets, hopes everywhere we go, and we're catching traces of people we've never met. Our memories leave us, and with strong emotions, they are able to link to the present. As Charlie says, they linger, whether someone is there or not. This is the meaning of memories with the present. This is able to take things that are gone and make them basically real again. An example of this is the Charlie bot, a dead little girl who was brought back by memories and emotions to make someone who is almost real again. It's said to be bubbly and silver, looking like liquid mercury in a liquid state, but Remnant has been shown to be airborne from FNAF AR, which is most likely a reference to the Silver Eyes quote I just brought up, talking about how memories leave us and that we're catching traces of other people. Remnant is also able to heal people as seen in the books, such as being described in the stingers and seen in frailty. Basics. Remnant at his most basic is memories from the past being brought into present existence with strong human emotions being the super glue or the binding agent. It is said to be bubbly and silver looking like liquid mercury when in a liquid state. Remnant is made up of these memories and emotions which can be used to trap souls within objects. Remnant doesn't always have a soul, though all remnant is a piece of a soul. What is known as agony is while well, yes an emotion is also a type of remnant, being the most powerful type. Remnant is also able to heal people. Moving on, here's what every FNAF fan went through on February 2nd of 2021. Agony. Take it away, underscore. Basically, Remnant is emotions and memories linked together, while Agony is the most powerful emotion possible, pure and agonizing pain. People often say that Agony and Remnant are two completely different things, but that's sorta of not true. Agony is called Dark Remnant because Agony is once again the most powerful emotion out there. It creates an enormous amount of energy and can cause an object to appear haunted without actually needing a host. To quote Dr. Phineas Taggart, You see, I'm convinced that Agony has a greater energetic radius and power than any other emotion. I've done numerous experiments to measure, capture, contain, and study the leftover emotions embedded into objects that work near a tragedy. My work is focused on my hypothesis that you could take a saturation of agony, add any kind of intelligence, even artificial, and they will combine together to transmute the energy of the emotion into the energy of physical action. This, I believe, is what explains what people call haunted objects. It should be noted that Taggart did not believe in possession per se. Agony is capable of being spread like an infection whether it be through people suffering being put onto an object, or a literal infection that can be transferred through inflicting injury by an agony-infused object. When something is possessed by agony, it's usually represented as a black viscous liquid. When the Citrate killed people, it filled them with so much agony that their bodies were left crying black bloody tear streams afterwards. 
In Phasma Frights, Elnor was a creature that was actually made of agony, and she may have been the result of one of William's many wicked misdeeds. She would transform into other agony creatures like Blackbird, Pit Bonnie, and or Shadow Bonnie, and feed off of her victim's pain. Great work, Underscore. Finally, the science behind what made people disregard Phasma Frights as a whole? Fazgu. It's not exactly important outside of the two stories it's in, but I'm trying to cover everything, so bear with me. Fazgu is a pink substance stored in a vial. How it works is you put a tooth in a petri dish. Then you put your finger in the substance. What ends up happening is the goo starts killing you and turns you into a blob. Meanwhile, the goo slowly turns into the person and becomes an identical clone. The clone then claims that he told me everything. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! The original host then dies. Five Nights at Freddy's people. I hope these objective explanations made sense. That's all I've got for you today. See you all on the flip side.